Greetings everyone. In this video we're going to explore a very famous number called the Golden Ratio. Uh, artists of the Renaissance such as Leonardo da Vinci has used the Golden Ratio extensively in his art. Uh, here you see Mona Lisa and her face fits perfectly into a golden rectangle and this was intentional. Before we go any further exploring uh, other artistic uh, uses of the Golden Ratio, let us uh, actually understand the definition of a golden rectangle. A golden rectangle is a rectangle such that, and I'll just show it to you as we're reading this, such that when a square with dimensions width by width, that means when I take a square with the dimensions uh, equaling the width of the rectangle by the width of the rectangle, so W by W, when such a square is removed, the remaining rectangle, which I'm going to highlight right now, this remaining rectangle is similar to the original one. Similar means uh, in mathematics a shrunk version of the original. So the claim is this um, circle, uh, this uh, rectangle here that I'm going to color red is a baby copy, a shrunk copy of the original rectangle. This at first sight uh, might seem a little bit unnatural, like why would you ever define a rectangle like that? But you're going to, uh, upon some thought, uh, realize that uh, this definition by the very fact that the shrunk rectangle will inherit the properties of the original has uh, implications for uh, infinity. The process uh, that you are doing here is repeatable indefinitely because you could keep uh, removing uh, squares from the remaining rectangles and this uh, will go on indefinitely as we'll see in a minute. This uh, quickly uh, a recap of this definition. So imagine I have a rectangle with such a property and I remove uh, a square uh, from it. Uh, the claim is this remaining purple uh, uh, rectangle is going to be similar, meaning a shrunk version of the original one. Uh, let us actually discover what this number, this ratio has to be. So imagine the original dimensions of the rectangle is x by 1. You could always decide uh, one of the sides to be unit length. So we're trying to figure out what this x value, the length has to be so that the uh, ratio, golden ratio, would be x over 1 and we'll discover what that number is. So here is uh, a quick um, recap of what we just discussed. If you're removing a uh, one by one rec uh, square from the rectangle. So these are the ones. What's going to happen is obviously this other side here is also one. Uh, but what is left from this distance x is uh, going to be x minus one. So observe the new width of the purple uh, rectangle is x minus one. Now if you remember from high school geometry, similarity means rectangles in this case are shrunk versions of one another so their sides must be shrunk by the same ratio so if you take the length to width ratio uh, of the original rectangle so x to 1 length to width ratio this has to be preserved in the baby rectangle here meaning this has to be now the new length, which is 1, and the new width, which is x minus 1. So this is the defining uh, equation for the uh, golden ratio that we are looking for. Now, if you cross multiply, uh, you're going to notice that uh, you will get uh, the following expression, x times x minus 1 will equal to 1. Uh, this leads to the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And if you remember the quadratic formula, when you plug in the values, you're going to get two answers, 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. The negative version here, 1 minus root 5, is a negative number, so it cannot be a physical ratio. When you discard that, 
you discover this initially bizarre looking number 1 plus root 5 over 2. So if you could construct your length for the rectangle to be 1 plus root 5 over 2, you're guaranteed the property that when you remove a, a square from your rectangle, the remaining rectangle will be a shrunk version of the original one. Now you might wonder what is the big deal, like why should we care about that? So let me just show you uh, why is this important and how there might be aesthetic implications here and the notion of infinity. So I'm removing a square from the original rectangle and imagine that I keep doing that. I go from uh, left to right, I keep removing. Now, because the remaining rectangle is a shrunk copy of the original, it inherits the property and obviously the definition of the original rectangle. So you can keep removing uh, squares and you're going to notice that there's always going to be uh, space there for removing more and more and more. Uh, and you can start seeing how the notion of infinity is uh, hiding in this uh, definition. This process can go on forever. Uh, as an artist, if you're using a canvas uh, of golden ratio, with the golden ratio as uh, the dimensions, uh, you can use it really to create infinite space. You could create something here and then use uh, a little bit more space here etc. And artists of the Renaissance really exploited this property to give uh, a sense of depth uh, to their uh, paintings. Now, for those of you who are uh, interested in uh, constructions, etc. and geometry, I'm going to quickly tell you how you could construct this number. Um, so you start with a square. I assume you know how to create a square. And imagine extending two parallel sides of the square. If you could bow bisect one of the sides and shoot a diagonal there, you're going to notice uh, you have here a side length of a half and a half. And uh, the final steps of the construction, I'll explain in a second, is uh, using this as a radius and this as a center, you construct a circle. And uh, basically, the moment you locate this point right here, you're done. And I'll explain very briefly why that is the case. Uh, the moment you have created a 1 over 2 by 1 right triangle, this hypotenuse is uh, of length root 5 over 2. And this is great news because what you're trying to create here, if you could sort of uh, bring that distance down with a circle, uh, so here is root 5 over 2, and observe root 5 over 2 added to a half is indeed the length of the golden ratio. So if you could create a rectangle of dimensions, uh, 1 over 2 plus root 5 over 2 by 1, you have practically created the golden uh, rectangle. Uh, this requires a little bit of thought. Uh, there are many other constructions of the golden rectangle. This is the one that I find very elegant because it's a completely in-place construction. I'm going to leave that to you for some thinking. Uh, so here is what we have seen already, uh, what with colors uh, you can see. Remove a square, remove a square, remove a square. Uh, you realize you'll never run out of space. Um, this uh, process, by the way, also gives a hint that uh, the golden ratio itself, this number right here, is an irrational number. This gives you a sense why this uh, might be. Now, one more uh, thing I want to show you, a couple of more things I want to show you is, imagine now you construct a uh, quarter uh, circles in each of these squares, you're going to notice that you could actually create this beautifully bending arc spiral, and this spiral will forever curve. And uh, this is going to start looking familiar, especially when you study biology, you're going to start realizing that there are many uh, seashells that mimic this behavior, 
which uh, starts making you wonder like why is there any connection how do these animals know to replicate um, a process that leads to the golden ratio to give a sense of that I'm going to quickly introduce you the Fibonacci sequence it's a very famous sequence you could do some uh, Google search on that invented I believe um, by Fibonacci in the 12th century in Italy uh, the, the sequence goes as 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, etc. And if you pay attention to the way the sequence progresses, you're going to notice you always take the previous two numbers to create the next. 1 and 1 when added makes 2, 1 and 2 when added makes 3, 2 and 3 when added makes 5, etc. Now you might say, what does that have anything to do with uh, Nautilus, the, the, the uh, seashell? Uh, imagine the creature is able to create a little compartment uh, that it feels comfortable. Once it has created a metric for that, it is very easy to replicate that metric. And then when it has created that, it is quite easy to replicate a metric that is uh, the composition of these two initial distances. So one and one makes two. Now observe, now that you have created this metric, it is uh, easy to create a metric of dimensions that is the sum of the previous two. And you can start seeing how a creature can keep um, weaving itself a pattern because every time it creates something it now has knowledge of how to make something just a little bit bigger so here uh, you can see that process uh, here one and one makes two one and two makes three two and three makes five three and five makes eight five and eight makes thirteen etc uh, observe this structure as it grows larger and larger and larger is going to uh, start becoming a golden rectangle. At this point it is not a golden rectangle because if you remove the square from it and remove the square etc. You're going to realize uh, instead of leaving an infinitely uh, shrinking rectangle behind it the, the process terminates. So this is not quite a golden rectangle yet but it is getting there so here is the connection of the Fibonacci uh, numbers to the golden uh, ratio consecutive ratios so in this case 21 divided by 13 very very close to the golden ratio etc so as you progress in the consecutive uh, divisions you're gonna get closer and closer to the golden ratio uh, the Greeks were uh, the first to discover, as far as I know, this uh, fabulous number, and they uh, used these ideas in their geometric constructions, the architectural constructions like the Parthenon, Acropolis, um, etc. Uh, we talked about Mona Lisa earlier. Uh, there are other uh, artworks created by Da Vinci, such as uh, Saint Jerome. Uh, here is St. Jerome's painting. Uh, again, uh, his body uh, in his posture completely fits into the golden rectangle. Uh, there are other artists, more uh, uh, contemporary artists, uh, recent artists like Mondrian, who obsessively used uh, golden ratio and golden rectangles in his uh, artwork. And in architecture, uh, Le Corbusier, you might be familiar with his uh, architectural works, have extensively used uh, ideas from the um, uh, golden ratio. Uh, there are also some more controversial uh, studies uh, that are done, uh, whether uh, aesthetics, our, our sense of aesthetics have anything to do with the golden ratio. Here you see Grace Kelly, uh, and uh, I will not go too much into this, but uh, you could make a case that her uh, profile perfectly fits into a golden uh, rectangle. Uh, in the case of Brad Pitt, uh, you could make a similar case, uh, but that's uh, something that you could study on your own. 
Anyway, so here is a very brief uh, introduction to the concept of uh, the golden uh, ratio. Uh, and I hope uh, this will give you some uh, launching path to uh, start exploring other connections in mathematics uh, that you might enjoy. Alrighty, all the best. I hope you had a good time. Take care.